By 10.30 p.m., a devastating EF4 tornado has been on the ground for nearly 100 miles, destroying everything in its path and obliterating the town of Dawson Springs, Kentucky. However, today is not that story. The tornadoes associated with the Quad State Supercell deservedly get a lot of attention. However, the December 10th, 2021 tornado outbreak was so much more than just the Quad State Supercell. Just to the south of the ongoing Western Kentucky tornado, the same potent atmosphere is coming together with deadly precision to unleash another family of devastating tornadoes. This is their story. As the Western Kentucky tornado is obliterating the town of Dawson Springs, Kentucky, a new complex of storms is beginning to initiate to its southwest. One of these embedded cells would quickly become supercellular as it developed a low-level rotating updraft called a mesocyclone. The storm continued to intensify and around 10.30 p.m., the circulation from this storm twisted its way to the ground below. The tornado began at 10.32 p.m., touching down in the northeastern fringes of New Bern, Tennessee, and quickly intensified to EF2 strength as it exited New Bern. The storm inflicted some more damage to a few homes as it moved to the northeast. The tornado then intensified considerably to EF3 strength as it destroyed a home, leaving only a few interior walls standing and ripped the entire third floor of another home off. The tornado remained at EF3 intensity as it entered the small town of Kenton, causing severe damage to many structures and ripping the roof and collapsing all exterior walls of another home. The tornado weakened but was still able to snap and uproot many trees as it left Kenton. The tornado then passed into a mostly rural area as it narrowly missed the town of Sharon, just to its north. The twister intensified again as it approached the town of Dresden. A home on the outskirts of Dresden had its entire second floor blown away at EF2 intensity. The tornado then intensified considerably to high-end EF3 intensity and made a direct impact on Dresden severely damaging the downtown area with many structures suffering major structural damage, several of which were completely destroyed. After passing through the downtown area, the tornado obliterated a few small homes, sweeping them completely away. Severe tree damage occurred here as many trees were snapped, denutted, and uprooted by the winds of the twister. Damage here would peak at high-end EF3 intensity. The tornado would continue at EF3 intensity as it missed Cottage Grove just to the south, severely damaging some homes here and removing the second floor of another home. The tornado would weaken slightly as it passed southeast of Purrier and destroyed a few homes at EF2 intensity, including a cabin which was completely destroyed. The tornado impacted a few more homes as it crossed Kentucky Lake into the land between the lake's recreation area, where it would down thousands of trees to a similar extent as the Western Kentucky tornado, which had passed through the same area less than two hours earlier. The tornado would inflict more EF2 damage as it destroyed several manufactured homes south of Bumpus Mills and completely tore the roof off of a brick home. The tornado then narrowly missed the Fort Campbell Army base just to the northeast, sparing numerous lives. The tornado then crossed Interstate 24, uprooting and snapping many trees and inflicting severe damage to several homes. Maintaining EF2 intensity, the tornado then directly struck the town of Pembroke, where several buildings were damaged, including the elementary school which had much of its roof blown off. The tornado began to rapidly weaken and finally dissipated just west of Elkton at 12.36 a.m. after traveling for more than 122 miles, making it the second longest track tornado of the outbreak behind only the Western Kentucky tornado. Remarkably, there were no fatalities from this tornado. Straight line wind damage became dominant as the supercell cycled, quickly producing another tornado northwest of the city of Russellville. This tornado rapidly intensified to EF3 strength, destroying multiple structures including a dairy farm which was completely destroyed. 
Trees were snapped with some sustaining debarking as the twister moved through. A man sheltering in a bathtub would get lofted into the woods by the intense winds, grabbing onto a tree as his house was torn apart around him. He would survive but sustain injuries to his legs from flying debris. The tornado then moved through a mostly rural area before impacting Chandler's Chapel where a church and school as well as several other structures would receive considerable damage. The tornado continued on past Chandler's Chapel through a mostly rural farmland, gradually weakening and finally dissipating at 1.12am, leaving one injured in a 28 mile path of destruction, earning an EF3 rating. As the Logan County tornado is weakening, a new circulation is developing to its south, and at 1.09am, this new circulation snakes its way to the ground below, with its sights directly on the city of Bowling Green. The tornado began at 1.09 a.m., 10 miles southwest of Bowling Green, Kentucky, lightly damaging some trees. The tornado rapidly strengthened as it destroyed some barns and farm buildings at EF2 intensity. A 1,700-pound trailer would be thrown 300 yards into a ravine here as the tornado strengthened considerably, displaying a strange composition with an intense subvortex within the main tornado. This subvortex would destroy a well-built home, leaving only an interior bathroom and hallway standing. The tornado weakened somewhat as it crossed Van Meter Road, continuing to produce significant tree damage. As the tornado approached the outskirts of Bowling Green, it rapidly intensified to EF3 strength as it destroyed several homes, leaving only their interior walls standing. The twister continued on towards a few single-story homes which were completely destroyed, a couple of which were swept away. However, it was found that heavy debris had impacted these structures, likely being responsible for the extreme damage. The tornado crossed Interstate 165 as it entered Bowling Green. The twister destroyed several power lines, causing a significant portion of the city to lose power. A local news station would capture the moment on camera before it would lose power as the tempest roared into the city. Nonetheless, though, this camera shaking quite a bit uh, from the storms. You can see right now, this is our AAA systems camera. Okay, lights are going out here on the west side of Bowling Green. There are power outages. The tornado then strengthened even further to high-end EF3 strength as it impacted the Creekwood subdivision, obliterating numerous homes. Some of the homes here would be completely destroyed, being swept clean from their foundations. Wooden shrapnel and vehicles would become airborne missiles, embedding themselves into numerous structures as the tornado passed through, and tragically, numerous fatalities would occur here, including an entire family of seven, all dying in the same house. The tornado weakened as it left Creekwood before impacting more homes at high-end EF2 intensity and severely damaging some townhomes. The twister then crossed US-68 and destroyed numerous businesses, threw debris hundreds of yards and bent metal light poles down to the ground. The tornado then narrowly missed the Western Kentucky University campus where a webcam would capture one of the only known photos of the tornado. The tornado tracked roughly along Nashville Road, strengthening back to EF3 intensity. Here, more businesses would fall victim to the tornado's ferocious winds as it narrowly missed downtown Bowling Green. While this first tornado was in progress, another smaller tornado would develop and track roughly parallel to the first, slowly closing the distance to the larger EF3. Two tornadoes were terrorizing Bowling Green simultaneously. Weakening again, the main tornado moved back into a more residential area where hundreds of homes would receive significant damage before the tornado made a turn to the northeast, impacting the Indian Hills Country Club and causing light damage. The twister then impacted the Bowling Green GM assembly plant where some mild damage occurred to the structure's roof before turning more to the northeast, simultaneously as the smaller EF2 was impacting the NCM Motorsports Park. The smaller twister soon dissipated as the larger Bowling Green tornado made another turn to the east, then northeast, rapidly strengthening to its peak intensity as it struck an industrial park along US-68. Multiple large industrial buildings would be completely destroyed here, one of which was leveled with its metal support beams being torn from their anchors to the foundation. Damage here would peak at high-end EF3 intensity. The tornado moved on to the northeast, heavily damaging a few more industrial buildings before beginning to gradually weaken as it left Bowling Green, heading into a more rural area. 
The twister continued to weaken before finally dissipating northeast of Bowling Green at 1.38 a.m. The parent supercell moved on to the northeast and would produce several more intense tornadoes, one of which would achieve EF3 status and claim another life near Saloma. Thankfully for the residents of Kentucky, the nightmare was finally ending. When the sun finally rose on December 11th, the true extent of the damage was revealed. A storm complex that had started in far western Tennessee had carved a damage path nearly 300 miles long, consisting of at least 15 different tornadoes. However, none could compare to the horror seen in Bowling Green. The tornado had claimed the lives of 17 and injured 63 others with estimated peak winds of 165 miles per hour, making it the second deadliest tornado of the outbreak behind only the western Kentucky tornado, 45 miles to its north. While most of the attention of the December 10th, 2021 tornado outbreak is focused on the much more famous tornadoes of the Quad State Supercell, the other significant tornadoes of that terrible night still devastated those affected by it and deserve to have their stories told. With time, homes can be rebuilt, businesses reopened, crops resown, belongings regained. Neighbors, friends, family members, these are the people we can never replace. We should make it our mission to learn as much as we can from that dark night in December to better prepare ourselves against the wrath of Mother Nature and make certain that those we lost will not be lost in vain. <laughs>